Hi everyone, my name is Bob Plass and this is the Westfield on Weekend Show and it is a real special show for us because we are here in Shelburne Falls, Massachusetts at the great studio of the internationally renowned artist Josh Simpson who is sitting to my right. Hi Josh, how are you? Hi, thanks uh, for having me today. What are you kidding? We are so excited because as folks out there know, we're doing the universe according to Josh Simpson all summer long and into the fall in Westfield, Massachusetts. And it is a, it's a, it's a celebration of uh, your, your life, your artistry, and uh, have you ever had anything like this happen before? Well, Not a citywide event that takes uh up so, many, so much gallery space and, and uh, there are signs all over town and yeah. uh, these wonderful posters are everywhere. No, nothing like this has ever happened before. Well, well we, uh, we, we are thrilled that you gave us the opportunity to showcase your work. And uh, for the, everyone out there, it's important for you to know that the, there are three gallery exhibits, uh, actually four, no, three gallery exhibits, am I right? Mm -hmm. um, we've got uh, the uh, gallery, uh, the Downtown Art Gallery. I think that's called the Renovo Gallery, the, right? Well, it's the Westfield State University Downtown Art Gallery at okay. the Renovo Nova building and what it is it, it is the uh, the luminosity of, of uh, Josh Simpson it's the luminous world of Josh Simpson and uh, there you have you how many pieces are in that show you know I'd say there must be uh, 20 20 or 25 pieces something like that yeah they uh, it's kind of shows the the range of what I do from my planets, which are glass spheres that are meant to evoke a feeling of looking at a little planet. Uh, if you were floating in space, looking down at a planet, that's what you might see. Uh, there are tectite pieces, which um, I use uh, glass that has the same formula as meteorites that have fl smashed into the earth from outer space. And uh, I also have uh, vases in that uh, in that space, and um, it's it's a nice show just by itself. Absolutely, and on the walls are uh, some. Oh, oh, how can you I? You got it. Yeah, yeah. I've got to tell you about this. Um, I have a, a, a friend. We've become great friends over the years. Uh, actually, a, a TV producer, a photographer, well-known guy in Rhode Island, Mike Rossi, and. Uh, Years ago, uh, probably uh, 14, 15 years ago, Mike Rossi came to me. Well, actually, he didn't, he didn't even come to visit. He sent me uh, an email with just one photograph uh, that he'd taken of the inside of one of my planets, and it was just this spectacular photograph. And I just went, I just thought, that guy is amazing. He really sees what I see. And so we've been off back and forth doing these photographic projects where Mike does artistic photographs of the insides of planets. It's, and it's uh, something that he invented, isn't it? To, to well, be he able to... He invented to a bunch of equipment that can actually, it's kind of like these, uh, it's almost like a telescope to look down at the surface of a planet. And um, yeah. his art consists of, if you take one of my spheres, whether it's a little one or a giant one, if you take one of my planets, there are thousands of things inside that planet. But Mike has this uncanny ability to pick just exactly the right frame to make really beautiful composite, uh, composed photographs. We were able to use those on our universal thoughts and universal facts posters throughout the town. Right. And what everybody, what we did was we, we combined pictures of your work with uh, some famous sayings about the universe. It's a, it's, it's a cool thing. And some facts about the universe as well. So at, at that downtown gallery, there's a whole uh, display of my work, but also there are probably 20 or more photographs of Mike Rossi's work. Absolutely, and through the lens of Mike Rossi is one of our shows, and it's, right. a, it's at the uh, Pilgrim Candle Marketplace Gallery. It's on Union Avenue, and uh, there you can, you can also go and see the, the work right. of Mike Rossi. And, and that gallery just has Mike Rossi's work. And, uh, That's right. And what, what, although his work is broad and he's 
done amazing things. He's uh, actually producing a, a show for uh, Rhode Island Public Television right now about antiques. Amazing. Yeah, so. uh, great. Well, he is also on view at the Westfield Athenaeum, where we've got a, uh, another show, which is the elements of Earth, sky, and, uh, and space, I think. Well, and, yeah, in, in, the, in the Athenaeum, there's a whole group of my platters, um, and they're large uh, glass plates that I've made that are really meant to look like Hubble space telescope photographs. I just, I, I love seeing uh, photos from Hubble. Actually, um, everybody's seen them, but they're just so profound when you think that you're looking at uh, some of the great nebula in, in the sky. Um, one particular Hubble telescope photo that I love, if you were to sharpen a pencil, mm -hmm. a long pencil, sharpen a pencil point and hold it out the end of your arm, the end of that pencil is about one arc second of the sky. The, uh, Hubble, years ago, they pointed Hubble at one arc, this tiny little fragment of the sky where they didn't think there was anything there. They just thought it was empty space. Empty space. And what was there? They, they, put, on this, they put it on uh, a long exposure, long duration for days. They had this uh, exposure and when they developed or got the, the, the image, there were more than 10,000 galaxies, galaxies in this one tiny little this part pinpoint. of the sky, in the pinpoint of the sky. And I just, it, just thinking about the vastness of the universe, that's what those platters are all about. All right, and the platters are, are, are incredible. You also have some of your early work there. I do, I, uh, um, I put in some of my early experiments, some of the things that I, I started to do 30 years ago, 40 years ago. Yeah. I just thought it would be fun to include those in the show. Sure, and some beautiful uh, vases, 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 right. that are, they, they're right in front of a window, and Josh, in the morning, when that light comes into the window, it's the best time to go to the Athenaeum to yeah. see the, the, the colors that you've chosen for these pieces. Actually, those vases are all, I, I call them iridescent vases because they actually, uh, are iridescent on the inside, but they're all just experiments. It's just, what much of my work is pretty complicated. I use designs and patterning and lots of colors and tiny little pieces, but with those vases, it's really neat because I can just take one color of glass and one experiment with making just one form. And um, I love them, they're just simple, and they're wonderful studies it's, for me. For me, it's, it's amazing because you look at these vases and, and, and you say, wouldn't they be great with flowers? But you don't need flowers. <laughs> you don't want to put flowers Actually, in these. Actually, you know, flowers you know, do look great in them. And, yeah, and, but, and, but they're alone, just the glass itself. What I like about those pieces is just the purity of the form. And, and I like to think, you know, when you, it's, it's funny, when you, go into somebody's house, you see a vase or a vase, and uh, you know the difference between the two? No, tell me. Well, Is it where I live? And no, no, <laughs> it, it's, only, it's, a, it's, it's only about a hundred bucks that makes the difference between a vase and a vase. Uh -huh, I got it. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> But uh, so the vase is the more expensive. Oh, to, to, of so, course. Well, we have some uh, vases at the uh, Athenaeum that, that, that are great. Anyway, um, f when you make glass, and I'm sorry my furnaces are turned off for part of the summer, but um, glass is this amazing material because it is so moldable. You can make it, it into any shape you can imagine. Mm. And so what's fun about those vases is that the, the lip can go this way, or it can go this way, or it can go this way, or, but, as a glass blower, you have a million, million choices. Choices, choices, yes. And, yeah. and where you decide to stop heating this liquid and let it cool enough so that it's solid and keeps its shape forever, is a, it's just this magical moment to decide when, when to stop working. Yeah. The, uh, 
the fourth ex exhibit that mm -hmm. oh, uh, that opens. Yes. Oh yeah, there's one. There's one other that uh, that opens in September. Uh, we're shooting everybody in uh, late August, so uh, we're we're trying to make this uh, a, a, a a full spectrum of everything. In September, we have an exhibit, uh, Inspired Explorations, and it's Josh Simpson and Friends, and that opens at the Arno Maris Gallery at Westfield State University, and uh, you have a lot of friends. Over the years, I, I've been making glass for well over 40 years at this point. And so during that time, I have worked with an amazing range of incredible artists. Many of these folks have worked with me in my studio. So they've been apprentices or employees, or they have just come um, from uh, other countries to work with me and as I look back there there's just a, a large number of people we still haven't heard from everybody but yeah. um, but uh, uh, actually tomorrow uh, uh, one of my assistants is coming from where she works now in New Zealand I mean she is a, a New Zealand native yes. and uh, she's bringing some work with her to be part of this show so oh how terrific Kate, Katie Brown Wow, and, uh, wow. Well, we're looking forward to that. There's also going to be a great event there, an artist reception later in September. I think it's September 19th okay. because it's the night before the Mega Planet Palooza, the Josh Simpson Street Festival in Westfield. And uh, we are celebrating Josh on the street. Uh, it's actually our old colonial harvest day that we reinvented for the uh, 21st century, Josh. And okay. we have music from morning until night. It's on a Saturday, a beautiful uh, fall day, we hope. And uh, we have uh, our, our main performers, our war child. It's a, the Josh, uh, Josh's uh, connection to war child. Oh, well, uh, well they're, a, they're a Jethro Tull tribute band. That's correct? exactly yeah, right. Okay. What's your connection to that? Um, my wife, Katie, it, uh, was, well, long story short, my wife Katie uh, was selected as a NASA astronaut in 1992, and uh, so she has gotten to fly on the space shuttle twice, but also flew in uh, uh, December of 2010 till May of 2011, flew on the International Space Station. While she was on the space station, she did the first space-to-ground flute duet with Ian Anderson, who is the uh, leader of Jethro Tull. Jethro Tull, and it just and happens that the uh, the leader of War Child works in Westfield. Uh, it's a New okay. York band, okay. and and uh, I I went online. I was looking for a, a, a Jethro Tull tribute band. I call this New York number, and it turns out that there's a Westfield connection. That's great. How do you like that? That's that's wonderful. Well, my wife has actually played with Jethro Tull down on Earth. Also, she did a series of concerts, or has done a series of concerts with them over the last several years. Right, and, well, uh, Lord Bob, the leader of uh, this, this tribute band, is so excited, and if, if Katie is in town, he would more than welcome repeat the, uh, the, the, the duet, so we'll, we'll have to work right, on that, that one. That would be great, we'll yeah, see, yeah. we'll see. But we've got um, uh, musicians from The Voice, and we have um, representatives of the universe of music. And so we've got the universe of art covered with your incredible exhibits, which will be open that day. There, there's a universe of food, there's a universe of arts, so there's a universe of children's activities, and that takes place on uh, September 20th, in downtown Westfield. Okay. Now, you know how to find out all about the universe according to Josh Simpson, Josh Simpson? Uh, I'm suspecting that you're gonna talk about universe according to Josh Simpson dot com. Is That's it? But I, I don't but know the exact URL. You, you, so. you, you're exactly right. The URL is Josh Simpson universe dot com. com. Okay. And uh, so folks can go on there and can see the, uh, the incredible array of, of children's activities Josh, that have joshsimpsonuniverse.com joshsimpsonuniverse.com okay. and we are here in joshsimpsonuniverse.com because we're in the studio we're in my studio right now yes right right shelburne falls Tell, let's let's go way way back and talk about uh, well when you were born where were you born and, and where were you, where'd you get uh, get started i uh, i was 
born in New Haven, Connecticut, and I grew up uh, about 60 miles north of New York City in a little town uh, called South Salem. Mm. Um, but when I went away to college, I was at Hamilton College in upstate New York. And they, what were you studying there? I was studying psychology. I was a psychology major and uh, physiological psychology. And um, um, Hamilton had this great thing in the 70s. I, I, I was in the class, would have been in the class of 70, 71 or 72. But at any rate, Hamilton had a deal where you could leave school for the month of January and do anything you wanted to do, provided it had- Skiing in the, in, in the Alps? Provided it had some academically redeeming value. It was a great deal, oh, it was a great deal. Okay. I believe there probably were people who went skiing in the Alps. Oh, sure. And, but I convinced the dean that, uh, and this was my senior year at Hamilton, I convinced the dean that learning how to blow glass would be somehow academically redeeming. And I, I uh, learned that there was a glass class, I thought, at Goddard College in Plainfield, Vermont. And so I left Hamilton, piled all my stuff in a, in a pickup truck and headed for Vermont. When I got there uh, in de late December of, uh, of 1971, uh, I discovered that in fact the glass furnaces had been dismantled and there was no glass at Goddard College. But I'd committed myself to be in Vermont for a month in the winter and I, um, I didn't quite know what to do, but I, there were bricks and materials around and I did know something about making kills, ceramic kills. And so I built a ceramic kill uh, to and then put a glass uh, crucible inside that. And uh, another student and I built a, a little glass furnace and started to work. And Goddard was a kind of a place where they would kind of let you get away with doing that kind of thing. And with, under the supervision of, no, of an artist there or anything? No, there was no, no supervision, we just did it. So they just sort of gave you a room to stay in or, or whatever? No, no, I didn't have a room to stay in. I stayed in the back of a Datsun pickup truck for a while and eventually rented a room in town, um, but you know, I was I was maybe nineteen or twenty years old, and sure. Yeah. Why did you choose for that January the glass blowing technique to learn? Well, <clears throat> I had visited a friend at Goddard many months before, and uh, for one reason or another, I had slept out in the glass studio, and uh, when I woke up in the morning. I was. It, I had slept near where they threw away the glass, and in the morning, with the light coming in, the glass itself, just the garbage that they'd thrown away, was so beautiful. Sure, it was as this wonderful organic stuff, and you could see through it, and light passed through it. And I just thought, if I could ever learn to fool around with that, it would be just wonderful. So this <clears> was <throat> actually the beginning of well, your your career. That was it. That was it. I uh, arrived in in uh, northern Vermont uh, at Goddard College and uh, built a glass furnace in the end with another student. And mm -hmm. we started, we heated it up and for a month we made glass. Actually, by the end of that month, I was so enthralled. Uh, and basically students taught each other, nobody really knew much, but sure. there were some that certainly knew more than I did and they were, uh, but by the end of that month, I was so, excited about glass that I wrote back to Hamilton and took a year's leave of absence. So this is with one required course left to graduate. Um, my parents just about died. I feel so bad, bad for them. <laughs> but I, I took a year off and uh, eventually did go back and graduate. But um, I bought a Dacron sail canvas. I sewed together a teepee. I rented 50 acres of land in, in January and set up a teepee. You were in, living in the winter in a teepee in, in Vermont. In Vermont, it sounds implausible, but that's what I did. And uh, I started to build a glass studio of my own on this. I rented 50 acres of land for $22.5 a month. Oh my gosh. And, uh, and just started to build a little tiny glass uh, studio. It was. 12 feet by 12 feet by 12 feet tall. 
and it used entirely recycled materials. Actually, I used my entire life savings to build this, uh, my entire life savings of $306. Amazing, um, amazing. Well, then how did you get from there mm -hmm. to selling? Or, or, well, or and, and what were you doing at that point? Selling, what, what, <clears throat> selling was, I didn't have any money to speak of. I mean, my, my expenses were pretty low, um, but I would make objects and I was just, uh, people would buy them. I mean, I was selling things for very little money, five bucks. Out of the think, teepee. Yeah, I mean, the teepee was further into the woods. The, the glass studio was right next to a dirt road. I got it. And, um, but in the very early months, uh, there was a health food store, health food, I'm not, sure what that was exactly, but sure. there was a health food store in, uh, in Plainfield, Vermont, and they were building a soda fountain, and they offered, to, they didn't want to pay me money, but they were willing to pay, um, they were willing to trade glass for food. And so the biggest, the best caloric bang I could get for my buck was to um, trade a soda fountain glass for one bag of 50 pounds of chickpeas. And, My gosh. Uh, and so... Lots of hummus. So I, I well, I, I didn't even know about hummus then. I just would boil chickpeas and eat. They're pretty bland by themselves. Oh, yeah. um, and anyway, so for one winter, I survived on chickpeas and, and cheddar cheese, broken pits of cheddar cheese from this, from this store. Because you loved it so much. Well, food wasn't important to me except to live. Glass was what was important. And by trading glass for food, it was a good deal. And, and out of that sprang an entire career. For, yeah. so from the mountains of, of, of Vermont or, 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 or the lowlands of Vermont. Actually, the, it, was, it was the mountains of Vermont. The mon mountains of Vermont, and, yeah, uh, yeah. And, 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 and so we have to go back or we have to continue our, 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 our exploration of getting you from there to here and we're going to have to do that in our next program. Do you believe that, that a half hour has gone That's by? That's amazing. That's gone uh, quickly. Uh, it's, it's really gone quickly. Josh, what, uh, what, what, what your experience working in Westfield, uh, Massachusetts, with uh, community, uh, have you found that to be an, an, an exciting thing? Westfield's an, an you know, interesting it's a, community. It's funny. I was talking with uh, my wife, Katie, just the other day, and... In, in the last 35 years of living in Massachusetts, I think I've, I've gone to Westfield four or five times in 30 years. In 30 years. Okay, so, because <laughs> I, you What's know, the it's, reason? All, it's, it's a great city, but, yeah, yeah. but it's yeah, yeah. not on my way to New York or Boston. R right, and right. Anyway, so in the past uh, bunch of months, I've been to Westfield 30 times, easily. 30 times, oh, and, and, it's and, exactly uh, right. It's a wonderful community. I am just so, uh, pleased and I shouldn't say surprised because I'm not surprised really but it is it's amazing that uh, Westfield has such a great community spirit and such a, 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 a live group of interesting and engaged people who are concerned about the town and excited about this place. Well, you know, uh, half of the excitement, we've been working on, the, uh, as you know, the universe according to Josh Simpson has been uh, in plans for about oh, uh, a year and a half now. And so yeah. we've been working for a year and a half. So we're thrilled and we want to invite everybody to Westfield to visit all of the exhibits and to take part in Mega Planet Palooza or some of the contests or some of the children's activities that happen throughout the town. And we are so thrilled and honored more than anything to have you and your staff, your, your, your wonderful assistant, Jackie Proctor. Yeah, yeah. Jackie has been a, a big deal in this whole oh, process. Oh man, we've I don't had think a... it could have happened without Jackie kind of saying, hey, Josh, you have to Oh, yeah, go to keeping this. both of us right. in order, <laughs> really, really. We thank you, Josh. We're going to be back in our next program to talk about more on your life and uh, actually maybe to take a little tour of your studio here. Great. Thanks a lot. And uh, see you all next time on uh, the Westfield and Weekend Show. And uh, have a great summer. And get out to Westfield and look at the universe according to Josh Simpson. Become a part of it. Thanks for watching.